Today, we are taking a look at one of the most interesting AI generation platforms around. It's got train styles, image editing via Gemini, and video generation all in one place. And there's a lot more. Okay, let's not waste any more time and go check this thing out. So today we are taking a platform tour of Flora. Now I'm pretty sure I've mentioned them once or twice on the channel. In fact, I actually did do a video about Flora when it first launched, but a lot has changed since then. And look, as always, I know that not everyone is into the infinite canvas, like murder board approach to generating. But stay with me because there really is some kind of interesting stuff that you can pull off here. And just as an FYI, yes, the Flora gang did reach out to me for this video. That said, I don't do coverage on stuff that I don't like. So that out of the way, let's go get tangled up in some nodes. So first off, addressing the elephant in the room. Yeah, I know that when a lot of you see a workflow like this, you know, the, the anxiety starts kicking in. But to be honest, it's actually not as complex as you might think once, you know, we start digging into things. There's a lot of creative things that you can do here. So starting off very simply to see how all of this works, we'll begin, of course, with our man in the blue business suit, who we last saw uh, hanging out with the wolf in the middle of a desert. Uh, they have made friends and they're sitting next to a campfire. So much like this new era of image generators meeting LLMs, uh, Flora has kind of a unique take on it. Um, if you just double click, um, you will have like this little menu here uh, and we'll select text here. And from here, uh, we have options for ChatGPT, 4.0 MIDI, Claude uh, Sonnet, or Gemini 2.0 Flash. Um, so connecting these two together, we can do, uh, you know, all sorts of LME type things. Like if we want, as suggested, we could just say, describe this image. That of course gives us a prompt. We can use this much in the same way as uh, like, you know, your describe functions. Uh, from here, if we double click and go to image, here we'll have options to generate in Flux Dev, Flux 1.1, Ideogram 2.0, LumaPhoton, Recraft, or Stable Diffusion 3.5. Uh, we will use Flux Dev here. Um, obviously, with our nodes connected here, our uh, prompt has already preloaded in. Uh, we have options for uh, aspect ratios here as well. I'll go with 16.9 uh, and just fire away. Interesting that Flux Dev comes back with this kind of illustrated version of our prompt. Um, but you know what I kind of like about uh, floor is the fact that, you know, we can play around with different models. So let's check out what uh, Photon's gonna do. Photon comes back with this look, which looks pretty cool. Um, from here, of course, we can you now bring it over to uh, video where chaining these two together, uh, we can generate either in Minimax WAN 2.1, uh, Kling Pro 1.6 or 1.5, uh, Luma Ray 2, of course, Dream Machine, Pika, Runway Gen 3 Alpha, or Lightrix. Uh, let's fire this guy off in Minimax and we're just gonna go promptless on it. So yeah, pretty simple, right? And that's kind of the thing here is that when you see those more complicated workflows, really all it is, is it's a text box, an image box, and a video box. Uh, it's just that there are a lot of iterations and permutations based off of that. So again, baseline, it's these three things. So it's really not that scary. The other thing that I wanna point out is that there are some like really like gorgeous and highly organized uh, template files that you can explore and play around with. Uh, again, highly organized. Uh, this one's by, I think, Michelle Ma. Uh, gorgeous work here. But you know, if your brain doesn't work in that organized fashion, that's okay. This is my giant clutter of a mess. And this is only one of them. As the old saying goes, it's not a mess if you know where everything is. So the first thing that I was interested in trying out is of course, you know, Google Gemini's new editing features. Um, so double clicking here and creating a new image block and just connecting this image. This was one of our mid journey generated uh, character references that I used that, I, well, actually I didn't use in the bridge, um, but it, you know, we generated a whole lot of them up. So uh, I figure put them to use. So we're just gonna connect these two together and you'll notice here, it instantly turns over to Gemini 2.0. So from here, I can just give it the prompt, give me a back view of this character, let that fire off. That one works for me. Um, now, as you can see, all I did was repeat that process a number of times. I have everything from a high angle here, another back view, um, some side views here, uh, a low angle one, an action pose, as well as a number of different close-ups here, uh, all showcasing sort of various emotions. So of course, now that we have all of this cool character reference stuff, you know, what can we do with it? Well, Floor have recently introduced style reference. Now to note, that is not character reference, but I mean, you know me, I'm. I'm 
I'm going to see if I can push things. Um, that said, at its baseline, what style reference does is that you can take a number of images that have a similar aesthetic, say like it's a bunch of Polaroids, train them up together and then create essentially your own mini model uh, that when you prompt will have that aesthetic. There are of course a number of preset styles that you can find by clicking uh, this little button here. Uh, everything ranging from, you know, vector, photorealistic, um, extreme detailer, which I actually kind of like a, a lot. And then of course, cinematic. So of course on the cinematic side, I had to generate up a bunch of cinematic stills from a crime film that does not exist. Uh, I mean, you guys know me, that's, you know, it's either gonna be a crime movie, a pirate or a barbarian. A couple of quick handy notes here as well is that you can always change uh, the style as well. So let's uh, change our femme fatale over here. Uh, let's see what happens when, uh, let's see what happens when we give her some studio lighting. Oh, I gotta say, that's actually kind of nice. So yeah, there is a real benefit to, you know, playing around with these different styles, even in, you know, styles that you wouldn't necessarily think to try. Uh, just give them a roll, see what happens. Uh, the other kind of handy thing to do is that if you think that you're on a roll, uh, like so, is that you can come up to uh, this very button and uh, if you hit that, that will give you uh, four more uh, iterations or options uh, based off of that initial image. And yeah, after a few minutes, we now have four variations on that. Um, really cool, it looks very like David Lynchy. Also, I'm not exactly sure what's going on in the interrogation scene. It's like, this guy is like, I'm not telling you anything, copper, no matter how much dog food you make me eat. All of which might get you wondering, how do you train your own styles? Now, I'm gonna show you how, but we're gonna do it a little bit off book as well. So to train your own style, you can either head over to, you know, the style menu over here, or interestingly, uh, if you just create a new image block uh, and then go to the style tab here, um, you can just come down and hit new style. Uh, this will bring up a little prompt box for you to upload some images. So it wants between 20 and 40 images. It's acting a little wonky right now, but I think that's just because I was trying to upload a bunch of images that I had already uploaded. Um, so yeah, I took all of our uh, character reference shots that we had generated up in Gemini, uh, plus a few other uh, background images that I generated up in Mid Journey when we were working on the bridge. Um, all you have to do at that point is just give it a style name. Um, so we'll say warrior uh, and then hit create style. It takes about seven minutes, seven to 10 minutes, I would say, um, to compile everything together. But once you have it up and running, uh, obviously all you have to do is come over to the image tab. Um, once again, over to style, and I named it Warrior over here. So uh, click on that. Uh, we can change this out to a 16.9 image and then we are going to give it the prompt. A female barbarian warrior walks towards a bridge with a castle keep in the background. I'm not gonna necessarily go crazy with the flowery details here, again, because a lot of the visual material has already been trained up. Uh, additionally, since that is a very simple prompt, uh, you can always come up to the enhance prompt button up here, um, that'll, kick off and yeah, now we have a much longer prompt. Yeah, after a couple of generations, we definitely do have a character that is referencing our trained material. Background style is of course a little bit on the soft side, but you know, I actually did not give it much material in that regard to train on. Uh, so from here, I can of course run it in cling uh, for a couple of shots. Um, I'm not gonna go too crazy here. I've already made this movie. And then another cling shot of our alternate uh, edition of this film uh, walking up the hill. Um, the other cool thing is that, you know, you can try some other generators out, of course, like this was a Minimax output. WAN 2.1 went a little bit nuts on me here. Um, I I actually do appreciate the energy in this output though. And then an alternate Minimax actually just went super crazy on me. Now here's something that is, I think a little bit on the unadvertised side because you actually can do a little bit of video to video as well. Uh, oh, additionally, by the way, you can run VO2, um, the you know text to video version of it um, here as well. But if you just leave like the whole thing essentially blank and run a video output into it um, and you know you can prompt for whatever you want and run that you'll notice that there is no model up here you actually end up getting kind of that old school like animate diff look um, so if you have been missing that 
And to be completely honest, I kind of do from time to time. Um, yeah, it is still available. Like you can still run it here. I know it's weird and wonky, um, but I mean, I actually think there's something like super cool about it. Again, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I mean, even taking that like wonky WAN output and running it um, as a video to video, uh, you end up with this, which I mean, I, just, I think it looks cool. And so trying this whole thing out in a different direction, actually switched out characters uh, and styles into kind of more of an animated style. Uh, this was a character that I had sitting around uh, for something that I was working on. I think it was, I think I was, I was definitely probably watching Eon Flux at the time. Um, so again, taking the same approach as we did with our Barbarian template, uh, I ended up generating up a number of different um, you know, poses and looks for her. One really handy trick that I definitely have to note uh, using that variation uh, function is if you do a prompt like close up face of this character showing emotion, but don't specify what emotion that is, and then run the variation, you'll actually end up with, you know, a number of different emotions. Instead of taking all of this material and, you know, training it up again, instead utilizing various poses and then running them into Gemini to see if we could get, uh, you know, edits that we could contextually put this character into different situations. And I gotta say, it kind of works. Uh, this is a Gemini edit uh, based off of this image uh, where I just gave it the prompt, woman stands in front of a phone booth in a cyberpunk city 16 by nine image. It did not give me the 16 by nine image, but that's okay because I thought this image looked pretty cool. So of course I ended up taking that and running it into a Minimax uh, video generation. And we ended up with this shot, which looks pretty cool. I wouldn't say it is a hundred percent accurate all the time, but I mean, it is clear that, you know, Gemini has an idea of who this character is. The other really cool thing that you can do is uh, if we add another video block here, um, and then I'm gonna take this character input here, or output rather, uh, drag this back to the input, um, and you'll note, you know, obviously we have Minimax, we have all of our standard video generators in which we can generate in. Uh, but I'm also gonna take this shot here, once again, the output of this, and drag this over to the input. And obviously we now have two frames. Uh, what's interesting is that up here, we are now limited to those generators that have first and last frame. Um, so I'm gonna use Kling for this and we're gonna fire this off. And that ends up giving us this shot, which is, I mean, that's, that's pretty flawless. I mean, if anything, this has kind of got me thinking about starting to generate these character turnarounds on a green screen, and then you just instantly have a chroma key and you can pop this animation in anywhere. Man, I gotta say, these character turnarounds are so cool. Once again, this is this image and this image rolled into here via Kling. Uh, I just love the fact that in the middle of it, we get like an additional pose um, because Kling knows that it has to buy some time between. Um, yeah, I mean, it is really awesome. It really does have me thinking about the whole like, you know, fight sequence thing, keyframing out uh, different poses in a fight sequence. Uh, I, you know, I don't have time to do it today, but I think that this might be onto something where, you know, again, chroma keying them out creating the poses and then, you know, running something like this and then calming them into a background just might work. So I think that gives you an idea of at least some of the stuff that you can do on Flora because there is definitely a lot more. Uh, going back to one of the more aesthetically pleasing workflows, uh, those of you right brain people are probably breathing a sigh of relief getting out of my work area. Um, but this was a really interesting one where, um, so this is just, you know, hand-drawn sketches of uh, storyboards run into an LLM with the prompt, like describe what's in the images, uh, you know, each one of these uh, hand-drawn pictures, uh, it comes up with, you know, everything that essentially you need. And then, um, then you can break it out into, you know, shot by shot, basically like focus on the intricate details of the frames and colors and whatnot, and, you know, start generating images. So basically you, you can end up, you know, generating out, um, you know, frames for a storyboard based off of like hand-drawn images, basically all through this. It's it's just a really cool way of working. So you can check out Flora for free. Uh, they give you 2000 free monthly credits. Um, you get, you know, the Flora editor and all the models, uh, three projects, one week of generation history, yada, yada. Uh, the professional plan starts at $16 a month, uh, agency at 48, and then uh, anything above that, I guess, you know, just give them a call. Oh, and I almost forgot. I know we've been focusing on 
Gemini a lot in this video. And I know that like, you know, the Ghibli thing in uh, GPT 4.0 is kind of like the hotness right now. They will be adding in the uh, 4.0 uh, multimodal model in as well um, fairly soon. So again, I do recommend checking Flora out. Uh, there Again, there is a free tier. So, uh, you know, no risk to see if the murder board is something that you jive with. Personally, I am having a lot of fun with it. I just need to find an AI agent to come in and clean up my workspace. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.